your right is Jay Pitts. He's your South Carolina Real Estate Commission Administrator. To your left, Robbie Bolin is your LLR Process Analyst. Both have years of LLR and South Carolina Real Estate Commission experience handling your real estate license. Gentlemen, thank you for presenting today. At the end of this webinar will be a question and answer session. And realtors, don't forget to register and attend the unconference in Greenville September 14th through the 16th. Thank you. All right. Thank you for having us. And good afternoon to everyone. It's our uh, pleasure to be here. And I hope this will be the first of many webinars that we'll do uh, throughout the course of the year. I'm going to jump right in and just tell you that we are under a new direction, new leadership at LLR. Uh, Catherine Templeton has taken the reins as our director and she has initiated immediate changes. And as we jump right in, I'm going to start with probably one of the hottest topics that we have, uh, and that was the creation of the Office of Licensure and Compliance about three years ago. That was under the previous administration where OLC, Office of Licensure and Compliance, was developed, taking all of the licensing away from the boards and putting it into a division of licensing. Quite frankly, it was a difficult change that didn't work. And immediately, when Ms. Templeton came on board, she heard the cries of most of the public and uh, immediately made a change to put licensing back into the board's hands. That became effective April 1st. So where it used to take 30 days to get a transfer done, 30 days to get uh, an initial license through the process, those days are gone. We're back to turning licenses around in 24 to 48 hours. And we're happy that that is the process in place because it eliminates complaints and phone calls on our end. However, change continues to evolve at LLR, specifically with the Real Estate Commission. And that's why Robbie is here with me today. And I thought we would begin with talking about online changes. We've redesigned our website. It's an all new website that we hope is easier and more user friendly for you. And we have initiated online applications, online transfers, online change of address, as well as online renewals. And I thought we'd take a few minutes to take a look at the new website and go through some of those changes and also introduce you to some of those online services that we're going to encourage um, each of our licensing base to use. So Robbie, if, if you want to you wanna start, all right, we'll go from our licensing board. The easiest way, most of you probably know the web address, but it's www.llronline.com. And so, so when, when you go to www.llronline.com, this is what you see, okay? And then from there, to navigate to the Real Estate Commission, we just go to the licensing boards, and you'll have a drop-down box, and then just come to uh, alphabetical listing of the boards. And you'll have to scroll down. You'll see the Real Estate Commission toward the bottom of that page. Just click on the link, and that'll populate the home page for the Real Estate Commission. And this is where you can begin to navigate everything you need to navigate, uh, helping yourself to what's going on with LLR and specifically the Real Estate Commission. On the left, you have... Uh, basically our navigation tools that you can use. You see they've also updated our home page a little bit. Uh, we have some photos of the staff out there so that uh, individual licensees and the public can know who they're speaking with. Um, but I think Jay first would like to go and talk about the transfer, the online transfer that we just implemented uh, very uh, just a few days ago. I'll kind of walk through this of course, this is on the live side, so I will not complete the whole thing. But basically, you come into the login by hitting that icon I just did. And if you do not know your user ID and password, you can click on this icon here. You would just put in the last five digits of your Social Security and then your last name. And you would select the board, which would be real estate, and then hit login. And it would supply that information to your email address. You know, very, very quickly, probably within about two or three minutes. Let me let me just interject quickly here. The number one 
issue, the number one ask that we have from realtors is transfer. I can't tell you the number of transfers we receive on a daily basis. This is going to simplify your life as well as our life at LLR, and that's what we're getting ready to discuss right now. It's online transfers. You can do it. The transfer is immediate uh, just by filling out the, the form online and answering a couple of the pertinent questions we're going to go over. And uh, I think we're ready. Robbie? Yeah, so basically, once you log in, you basically come first to the notification page where you basically affirm that you've Discuss this or talk with your former property manager in charge or your broker in charge that you are leaving his or her company and you just indicate this by checking the box and then the same for the new employee broker in charge or property manager in charge that you have discussed that with them. I can't express enough the importance of making sure that you talk to both brokers and that both brokers are aware that you are transferring your license and both brokers have agreed. Uh, we had a real estate commission meeting yesterday and there was some discussion about this because again it's a new change for us and uh, the discussion that some of the commissioners had was should there be some type of penalty if you check these boxes and haven't talked to your brokers so let me strongly urge that these are affidavits you're you're telling us that you spoke to both brokers and both brokers have agreed to this change and uh, I can't I won't make sure you understand the importance of that Robbie. Once you verify to check that information, you'll just hit the proceed button and it's going to bring up your actual license number and, and your name to make sure that everything was entered correctly, which it should have been with your user ID and password. But you'll click on your license number. Okay. Then it basically shows the company that you're currently with and the broker in charge. To hit change, you would just click the change button. And then you would type the new name of your company. If you're unsure exactly what the name or how it is in our database, you could, for example, put ERA, which I'll do. And that'll give us a list of all the ERA companies. Uh, and then you go through there. We supply the office number, if you know the office code number. Of course, the name of the office and the address. You just choose that office that you're going to work for, and then it'll display that I wish to transfer my license from the current office you're with to the ERA office. And by hitting confirm, what takes place is that goes into a queue on our website as the change is made. Uh, and then one of the staff in the morning, they will have a print queue in their print queue to print the new license that'll be mailed to the ERA company. So basically what that means is, for clarification, you can do this 24 hours a day. If you do it at 11 o'clock at night, the next morning we'll come in and print that new license and put it in the mail to you. And again, those go to the, to the company, the new company. So that's the, um, that's the transfer that Jay wanted to discuss as far as that. Also, uh, there used to be a $10 transfer fee. We've done away with that. There is no fee to transfer your license. Change of address is another issue I think Jay wanted to talk about. Um, to update, you can also do that from our online services. It would be the same process. You would enter your user ID and password. And it brings up your license number. Once you hit proceed, you have the option of updating your information. Um, and if you do not have a current email address on file, you can update your email address at this as well as your home address and um, your mailing address so that any information we send to you or, for example, when you do things online like that transfer, if we have an email that email notification will go back out to you saying that that transfer was complete and everything. So it's very important that you keep the address and the email information on file with us. Let me, let me tell you this. The second most request that we have is for change of address. Whether you're going to have a change of address or not, I would encourage all of you to go out there, go online to the website, and update your information. 
We want current email addresses. We're doing everything we can to capture those email addresses so that we can begin e-blasting information to each of you, as well as when you do a transfer, making sure you get that confirmation by way of email, and both brokers will also be sent uh, confirmation that that transfer has taken place. Brokers, make sure we have your email addresses. I, can, I want you to make sure you do that. That's important for both you and for us. Again, just to let you know that online transfer is on the Real Estate Commission homepage. We put a large icon out there right now, so hopefully people can spot. it very easily. Jay, I think you wanted to talk also about the new applications online. Let's, let's do this briefly, yes. Okay. Um, this is also a new feature that, that uh, you can go online now and, and, and present your application to us online. So, Robbie? Okay. Again, under licensing, under our licensing boards and uh, applications and forms, there's, once you go to forms application, we have a new link for online application, and this is just right now strictly for initial applications, either your provisional people, uh, initial salesman or broker, which may be coming from another state, Tennessee, Florida, someplace, or uh, we do have reciprocity applications out there with North Carolina, Georgia, and West Virginia. And there's a brief synopsis for each one of these that an individual could just kind of read and make sure they understand what they're applying for. And then also to each one, we have instructions, a link to the instructions, so they can view what instructions are and their qualifications for obtaining that particular license. Once they review those, they can go to the online application login, and there they can start their process. If, if you do not have an account, all you do is click set up account. You just put in your user ID you want to use, your own password, and, uh, and and then it'll log back in. I've already set that up, so just to give you a glance of what it kind of looks like. And here you would have to create a new application Then we'll have different divisions. Right now, the two main application groups we have online are for nursing and real estate, but of course, you would select real estate, and then we have seven applications out there. We have a broker examination application, a broker in charge reciprocity application, a broker reciprocal application, property manager exam application, provisional sales application, salesman exam application, and then the salesman reciprocity application. So, and once I clicked on this, it's it's very quick. I don't want to take time today because I think Jay's got a lot to cover, but it's probably quicker applying online than it is for you to sit down with a paper and pencil and try to write this out and send it in to us. Also, this is updated every night, so when the staff comes in tomorrow morning, they get an email saying these individuals have applied for this license online, and the application is all right there online for them. You have cho uh, your choice to upload any documentation that may be required, whether it be your school certificate or if you're coming from another state, a certificate of licensure and history. Uh, if you have to answer yes to a disciplinary question, you can even uh, write up your explanation, scan that, and upload that. So staff will have your whole application in the morning on their desktop, and you save the mail time, save having to uh, pay with a check uh, or a money order or anything because you can pay with your credit card right online and all. Let me, let me just uh, be blunt here for a second if I can. Um, when we uh, did away with OLC and brought staffs back to the individual boards, uh, there were some cutbacks at LLR. During these economic times, uh, budgets being the way they are, uh, we're all experiencing cutbacks. We don't have the number of staff that we used to have with the Real Estate Commission. These changes that we are implementing, the new 
online services, we hope will eliminate uh, a lot of the processes that are in cumbersome, that take time, and quite frankly, slow you down from getting your license. This process is, is new for us, it's innovative, we hope it to be more efficient, more effective. I can't encourage each of you enough to go online and view this website. It, it is a host of information. I would imagine that most of the phone calls that we receive uh, for questions that are very simple questions that require simple answers, those questions are online. Uh, those answers are online. And use these services. Go to, go to Change of Address and update your information, specifically given us um, your email information. That stuff is important to us. Um, if you have any comments, uh, any feedback, if there's something that you feel like would be uh, easier or more user-friendly, suggest that to us. Our emails are online and we'd be happy to take your suggestions and run with them. Um, anything else from your end? I think we covered everything you want okay. to cover today, Jay. That, that's good. That, uh, thank you, Robbie. I have a host of topics that I want to talk to you about um, and things that I want to cover with you. Um, and I'm going to jump right in if that's okay. Uh, we've mentioned a little bit about um, staffing at LLR and the things that we're going to be uh, changing. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, an issue that we changed several years ago that was a big concern. A concern to our licensing base. It raised a lot of questions a concern to our educators and our providers out there because it, it, it cut into the things that uh, that they need to do as far as continuing education classes. And, and what I'm getting at is the staggered renewal process. Several years back, uh, under the previous administration, we decided, uh, they decided, to actually take renewals and, and do renewals all at the same time. Um, that's problematic. It created problems and issues for us at LLR, and I know it created problems and issues for our constituency base out in, in the licensing field. Beginning 2012, the majority of our licensees will, in fact, renew their license. We had a handful that renewed this year, but probably 90 to 95 percent of our licensing base will renew in June of 2012. When you get your renewal form, um, it will state that you will have either a one-year renewal or a two-year renewal. Now, let me tell you that we are in the process uh, at the Real Estate Commission of developing the process of how we're going to stagger your renewals. That information we should have completed and ready to go by the end of the year. And we're going to come back here if the association will let us and do a, a special webinar on renewal season. In addition to that, we're going to e-blast everyone about renewals. We're going to go to different associations across the state, and we're going to talk about it so that it doesn't hit you all at once. But basically what I'm saying is we're going back to staggering renewals so that half of the 41,000 licensees that we have will renew in odd years. The other half will renew in even years. And we feel like that's going to be better for you, better for us, and certainly better for the education providers that we have teaching continuing education courses. All that information is forthcoming. Uh, we're developing the process and we'll have it ready by the end of the year and we're going to e-blast that information so that you will have that in front of you. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about random office inspections. Um, we began this process back in March. We hired uh, uh, Joe Harmon back who was a longtime uh, investigator for the commission and he went out into the field and did random audits. Um, unfortunately, Joe's had some health issues. I would ask that you keep him in your prayers, uh, but we're going to be reposting that position, hiring somebody to begin random audit inspections as well. And what that individual will do um, randomly will knock on your door as a broker and ask to see uh, your escrow account, your trust fund account, and just do a simple audit to make sure that it's in order. That, uh, again, started in March. Uh, we began that process in March. We've taken a little bit of a, of a delay, uh, but we will jump right back on that fairly soon, fairly quickly, so be ready for that. Um, let's talk for a second about, uh, about the mission that we have at LLR. Um, Catherine Templeton is our director, um, and she has come on board 
and her goal is to make us more efficient, more effective. Um, our mission statement state that we're here to protect the public, and that's what we intend to do. Uh, how we do that in a lot of ways is through complaints and investigations. And there's, there's been some concerns, some issues, and some questions that we've received over the years as to uh, the number of investigators that we have and the number of people we have out in the field doing investigations. Briefly, we are a complaint-driven organization. Yesteryear, we used to have a host of people that would hit the field and randomly show up to do these audits and to uh, build questions or concerns that may come to the commission. Today, currently, we are a complaint-driven organization. What that means is that if you have a complaint, if you have an issue, if you have a question, you can go online, fill out a complaint form, and send that complaint form in to us. Every complaint form is looked at. If we determine uh, that we have jurisdiction, then what we then do is assign that to an investigator, and that complaint is fully investigated. Once it's investigated, the investigation is complete, it comes back to the Real Estate Commission, where we have an IRC, which stands for Internal Review Committee. The IRC is made up of four individuals, the administrator, which in this case would be myself, the chief investigator, um, who was Sharon Wolf, the lead investigator, who she's assigned that to, um, the, the staff attorney, and, and I said four, but I actually meant five, and the fifth person would be um, a public member that the commission has put on this IRC to review this complaint. At that time, we look at the complaint, this IRC makes a determination as to the type of sanction that we should issue, and we will either consent to that individual, dismiss, or we could possibly uh, recommend to the board revocation or suspension. Uh, if that individual doesn't want to consent to any of those things, then uh, they have the right to come before the Real Estate Commission for disciplinary hearing, which we would then schedule and have that hearing before the entire uh, Real Estate Commission. So again, don't hesitate to go online and initiate a complaint form if you have a complaint that needs to be answered. Those are a couple of the topics that I want to talk about immediately. I'll, I'll stop for a second and see if anyone has any questions. And if you do, please feel free to type them in and send them in, and we'll, we'll take a, a break and answer some of those questions. And as you're doing that, I'm going to continue the process. Um, I want to talk for a second about uh, license law revisions. Uh, this is something that for the last several years, both the association and the real estate commissions uh, have had conversations on. We've discussed rewrite and revisions of the law. We've talked about whether we should be an all broker state or, or, or not. Uh, we talked about a host of things that would involve the license law. Uh, about a year ago, the, the Real Estate Commission uh, developed a, a legislative task force. Uh, that task force was made up of uh, brokers from large brokerages, from small brokerages. Uh, we have educators and providers on, on that uh, task force, as well as a host of association members. Um, including the president of this association. Um, that group uh, met over a year to discuss the license law. We reported the changes to the commission yesterday at the Real Estate Commission meeting, and it was quickly noted that what we thought was going to be a simple process ended up taking um, a fair amount of time, a year, to make those changes. Here's where we are. The changes have been made. Task Force has recommended these changes to the Commission. We have two new commissioners that joined us for the first time yesterday. So the discussion was tabled to the next meeting, which is in September. And at that point in time, uh, we will entertain those uh, recommendations from the Task Force and either vote those recommendations in or out. And at that point, it's a public document. It's really a public document now. And our plan is to host commission meetings, come over to the association, host association meetings, and to put this uh, piece of draft legislation in front of as many people as we can so we can get feedback before we actually present it to the legislature. 
And I would imagine going down the road that uh, we will have a lot of input from the association leadership and uh, we will work with them to come up with a law that works for all of us. I understand we probably have a question. Yes, we do. Uh, Rusty Williams is asking, do agents have, have an appeal process against consent? All right, thank you, Rusty. Let me, let me digest this question for a minute. Do agents have an appeal process against complaints? Um, I'm assuming that you're, you're talking about the complaint that may be filed against you. Um, and if that's the case, um, yes, you, 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 you would be able to defend yourself in a complaint. Hopefully during the investigation, uh, both sides are going to be uh, talked to, the one who is the complainant as well as the respondent, and, and both of you would have a chance to determine uh, you know, what, whether there was wrongdoing or not. You'll have a say-so, in other words. If it's determined by the investigator that there was wrongdoing and that a, uh, a complaint goes forward, uh, then the individual would either consent or say, no, I don't want to sign it. I I'd rather take my chances with the commission. And you would have your day in court at a disciplinary hearing, so to speak, with the real estate commission. Uh, I hope that answers your question. If not, follow up, and we'll be happy to try to expand that a little further. Um, two other people. Two, all right, two other people. Uh, where's, help well, me. They're, they're, they're yeah. right now, yeah. All right, so we haven't gotten a question yet. No. All right, well, we'll wait for a second while you enter uh, the question and see if we can try to answer it. All right, well, while we wait, I'm going to keep going. Um, let me give you some numbers, just kind of update you as to where we are. We have approximately 41,000 licensees. This time last year, we had about 51,000 licensees. So based on the economy, that ought to tell you that uh, we've had a reduction in the numbers of licensees that we have out there. Um, in addition to that, the commission approves schools, instructors, and courses. A lot of questions come in to us all the time about continuing ed courses or courses that uh, people may want to take. I would tell you that all that information is on the website. Please go to the website, and I think it's under applications and forms. You can find that information there. And it has a complete list of, of, of courses that are being offered from providers and schools across the state. It's updated on a daily basis, so it is current. Um, if you have problems with that, please feel free to call us. Um, we have about 103 schools, 251 instructors, and about 598 courses for uh, qualifying in CE. So that, that may help you there. Um, Rusty just said thanks to Todd for your help. All right. To answer this question. Good. You're welcome, Rusty. If I can help you in any other way, feel free to call us and let us know or email me. Um, let's keep going here. Uh, I've gone through the complaint process. I want to make sure that that's understood and that, that you know where we are with that. I've talked about the license law revisions um, a little bit, and I want to make sure that, uh, that you all get a copy of that in your hands at some point in time so you can take a look at it. I think that stuff is important. Um, we had a question come in about uh, can you attend a commission meeting? Um, I'll tell you that uh, based on the workload, the commission now meets on a monthly basis. Used to be we would meet quarterly and then we said, okay, we'll meet six times a year every two months. Uh, but based on the number of application hearings, based on the number of uh, complaints that we received, uh, it was determined that we would meet on a monthly basis. Uh, we usually don't meet in June or July because it's usually renewal season um, and it's vacation season, and so we take those two months off. You are welcome to attend any of the meetings that we have. In fact, we would welcome you in your participation at these meetings. A list of dates as to when the commission meets is on our website. Uh, we, we continue to update that. Very seldom do we have to change a meeting, but when we do, we update it on the website, and you can find that information there. Uh, typically, uh, we have a business session every other month, which is to discuss business at hand and application hearings, and then uh, inverted in those months, uh, every other month as well, we have disciplinary hearings because those usually take a little bit longer. Uh, I'll explain the application hearing process to you a little bit so that you'll know, and I don't know that this would apply 
to most of you who are already licensed, but if someone comes to you and wants an, uh, a license, you need to know this process. Um, after you apply, you send your application into the Real Estate Commission. Um, that application is reviewed. If you've checked yes to disciplinary actions other than a minor traffic accident, um, the process is then slowed down. That application comes to me. At that point, we require a criminal background check. We review that background check, and I'll tell you that if there's a host of misdemeanors that may have occurred, uh, you're subject to come before the Real Estate Commission for them to make the decision as to whether you should be licensed or not. If you have any felony convictions whatsoever, that's an automatic application hearing before the Real Estate Commission. Um, that's not new. We've done that for years. Uh, yesterday alone, we had four application hearings and we had seven scheduled. Um, seven is a, is a fair, uh, fairly large number for us, but we're seeing that that's the case uh, more so now than ever before. Um, so I want to make sure that you understand if you check yes, and we would expect you to be honest on this application, um, then a criminal background check will be done. Um, in this new license law revision that I talked about a few minutes ago, we would like to see mandatory criminal background checks. It, it makes it easy on us. It makes it easy on you. So hopefully that will pass out and we'll see that coming uh, down the road. Do we have any questions? Uh, yeah. Jack asked if, uh, if, did you say the criminal background check is not done? That's right. It's not done on every applicant. That is not law and we can't do that right now. However, uh, Jack, when someone checks yes, then we would ask for criminal background check, and that's when we ask for that to be in and we review it. Hopefully that answers your question. All right. So um, let me talk for a second about um, continuing education audits. We're on the honor system here, and so when you renew your license, um, you check or sign an affidavit that says, yes, you have taking your continuing education courses. Um, we hope that you're telling the truth and we expect that you're telling the truth. However, if that's not the case, um, we will randomly audit about 10% of our licensing base every renewal season. Uh, once that audit is complete, and it happens, we find plenty of people who don't have their continuing education uh, classes. I'll tell you, at this point, it becomes problematic because not only did you not do the work you were supposed to do by having continuing education hours, that individual's lied on their application, and that's a problem. So you're automatically fined $500 for lying on that application. Your, app, your, your license is suspended, and you have to get those continuing education hours prior to being uh, uh, reactivated. So uh, it's a process that we're looking at. It will continue uh, down the road. In the future, we hope that we'll be able to, throughout renewal season, ask for those courses that you've had and link up with the educators and providers so that we don't have to have the audit. That's down the road. Don't know when that's going to happen. But I can tell you now, um, continuing education audits happen yearly, and you need to make sure that if you say you have those hours, that you have them in place. Uh, can't express that enough. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Um, lawyers who are brokers, is there a way that they can use the sale in classes and not receive any credit? First of all, that's coming from Mr. Vinzani out of, out of Charleston. Is this the same Jeff Vinzani I was in school with and sit at football games with? I'm, I'm probably so. Hope you're doing well, man. Good to see you. Um, I'll tell you what, Jeff, if you'll email me, I'll, I'll get a, a better answer for you on that because, um, let me read it again, lawyers and brokers, is there a way for CLE classes to count for CE credit? Generally, um, we have core courses that you have to take, we have CE courses that are listed, and those are the courses that you have to take in order for you to get continuing education credit within real estate. But if you'll email me separately, I'll be happy to look into that a little bit more and see what type of courses you're talking about to see if those are on our approved list. And certainly if they are, we can approve them. If not, um, then you'll need, to, you'll need to take the courses that we have listed on the website. All right.
question from Dale. Uh, is there a notification requirement? Or I'm not sure uh, what your question. Why would that account not be maintained would be my first question back to you. Um, and, and if you don't have, an, you don't have to have an escrow account per se if you're not using one. A lot of times we get questions where attorneys may be holding the money in escrow. Uh, but, but for the most part, uh, I'm not really sure uh, that I understand that question completely. Um, yeah, it, and so if, if the money's being held with, a, with an attorney, that, that's fine. There is no form for that. Um, if you were audited, you just need to explain that and be able to, to, to direct the auditor to where that attorney is and he can then look at those uh, accounts to make sure they're okay. Dale, I hope that answers your question. If, it, if Let me know. Uh, he said in my commercial practice, I do not hold Okay. Them. Then I think you're fine with that as long as an attorney holds them and we can get to them if we need to audit them. Let me know if that, that takes care of, of your question. Um, Where can I access the commission fee schedule? Again, that's on our website. Um, I, I, I want to, I can't say it enough. Go to the website and, and just tour the website. Everything you probably want to know is there. If not, feel free to call us. I will tell you, um, take a, a moment of personal privilege to tell you that the phones uh, ring off the hook at the Real Estate Commission. Uh, we've redesigned the phone system. Uh, this is another mandate by our director uh, so that we're on a rotation. Uh, used to be you would be put uh, into hold pattern and if you got someone on the phone, you were lucky. If not, uh, then you had to call back. Uh, that still happens on occasion. Uh, and that's because, again, we've downsized in our, our number of staff, but the number of phone calls continues um, at the same pace they've always continued. Um, be patient with us, number one. Uh, number two, uh, think about the questions before you call and ask them, because a lot of times they're common sense questions and they're simple questions that really, if you were a licensee or a broker, you ought to be able to answer yourself. If not, most of the time, the answer's on that website. And that's where you go to find the answer. I tell you this not to sound harsh or rude, but we simply don't have the staff that we used to have to answer the number of phone calls that we receive. So we're trying to make it easier on you to find those answers on the website. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't call us if you have a question. We'll be happy to answer the phone and take your call and, and, and answer it. And I'm happy to do that for you. All right. We got is how long does escrow run in this queue? Hit the same. That's a good question, Rusty, and I hope you're doing well today. Um, there's nothing in the law that clarifies the answer to that question. Um, that money sits in escrow until both parties have agreed uh, on what to do with that money. There is no magic wand here. I have no answer to give you other than the fact that um, that money can't go anywhere until both parties have agreed to the disbursement of that money. Um, it throws you, the agent, you, the broker, in front of the bus a lot of times. Uh, we're, we've told you from time and time again it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a civil issue. I understand that magistrates don't want to take the issue up, that there have been some issues where they've just said we're not dealing with it. Um, that probably needs to be reviewed in law and some, some um, laws put into place as to how to deal with that money. But it's there indefinitely until both parties agree. If there's a, a mediator that needs to come into play, um, a magistrate needs to come into play that can help get the two parties together and settled, that would be something the broker uh, would have to initiate and hopefully resolve that issue. Hopefully that'll help you some, Rusty. It may not be the answer you want, but there is there is no clear answer from the Real Estate Commission as to what to do with that. Now she fears that without meeting sales meetings, 
of those industry changes are Right. Um, thanks, Whitney. Uh, I'm going to hound this issue to death. Uh, I'm concerned that we don't have all of the email addresses that we need to have uh, on file with the Real Estate Commission. Please, under that change of address on the website, send us that information. What we are planning to implement with the email addresses that we currently have, and I want to say we have 41,000 licensee base. We probably have about half of the email addresses, maybe more than that. Um, I don't have a number, but let's say we have 25,000 emails. We're going to utilize that tool to, uh, to get information out to you. When, when policies change, when laws change, when renewals change, uh, this new change uh, of address or new transfer form takes place, those types of information pieces can be email blasts to you, and, and that hopefully will be done on a regular basis. In addition to that, um, when I arrived here at, at the association office, uh, I was speaking with uh, Nick Kremitis and with, and with Byron King, and we're going to utilize um, their uh, tools and emails to, uh, to send information out as well. So you're going to see... Um, you can see us work together to get information out to all of you, not only those who are members of associations, but to the entire licensee base, and we'll use um, SCR to help us do that. I hope, I hope that answers your question, um, Whitney. Okay. Uh, uh, so one party is not available anymore, so the, the escrow is More than likely that would be the case. Why don't you email me that question? Let me do some research and try to help you with that one. I don't know that, again, we have anything in the law that would help us give you an answer there, but we could certainly talk about it. And uh, you can go online and get my email address. And Rusty, I'll be happy to have a one-on-one -on -one with you with that one. You're welcome, by the way. Okay, um, how are we looking on time, guys? All right, um, be thinking of some questions. This is a good opportunity for you to uh, forward questions to me and try to let me answer them if I can. I'll, I'll certainly be happy to do that. And while, while you're thinking of questions, I'm going to review my notes to make sure I've covered just about everything that I want to cover here. There is some basic information that I would like to share with you. Uh, for the first time since I've been administrator for the Real Estate Commission, and I'm just beginning my eighth year in September, um, we have a full commission. Um, we have nine commission members. Six of those members are from congressional districts. Uh, in addition to that, we have two public members. And uh, one seat was vacated forever. Um, but Governor Haley has appointed two new public members that joined us yesterday. And then we have a member at large that the commission themselves actually vote on. So we have a full commission of nine members. We, we met yesterday, and uh, it was good to have all seats around the table filled with commissioners. Um, let me tell you a little bit about LLR. And this may enlighten you just a second or two about what we have at LLR. Currently, there are 40 boards at the Department of Labor, Licensing, and Regulations. The Real Estate Commission is just one of those boards. Um, what we've seen happen over the past few months is um, administrators are now wearing more than one hat. So to consolidate, to downsize uh, because of the economy and, and budget cuts, uh, hopefully to become more efficient, more effective, uh, we've seen administrators wearing more than one hat. For example, uh, not only am I the administrator for the Real Estate Commission, I'm the administrator for the Real Estate Appraisers Board, as well as the South Carolina Athletic Commission, which is a new venue for me. Um, so we have 40 boards at LLR. Uh, each of those boards uh, have the same type of practices that we do. They license their individuals. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 300,000 licensees uh, statewide in the agency, and then of course some are out of state as well. 
Um, so it's a pretty big operation. And uh, in addition to the pole division, which is Professional Occupational Licensing Division, which we are a part of, that's the 40 boards I mentioned, um, we handle the Division of Labor as well as uh, Fire and Life Safety. And um, so it's a fairly large agency that requires a fair amount of, of attention. Um, how about how about Jack? Do we have a question from Jack? Yeah, I think that Edgar's question. Edgar. 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 Good question, Jack. I don't have an answer. Um, I'll need to research that one. I don't see why not, but I'll need to look at the law, see what the law states on that, um, because it would be up to uh, you, and I want to say in some cases a lawyer for disbursement of those funds. I'll be happy to look that up if you uh, would get my email address and email me that question, or is there a way for me to get these questions before I leave? Um, yeah, you can copy them. Yeah. Um, why, don't, why, don't, why don't we get the email address here, if we can, Jack, I'll be happy to look that up and send that back to you this afternoon. Mike and Dale, you have a question. Uh, you just, uh, All right. Um, would it help? I'm going to give you the, the LLR email address. It's www.llr online.com www.llronline.com uh, once you get to the agency address on the left side of the screen you see licensing boards go to licensing boards there's an alphabetical listing obviously you would want to go to real estate commission and that will take you to our website I've been told and I don't know this but you can google South Carolina Real Estate Commission, it will take you directly to our website. So you might want to give that a shot as well. All right, Jack, we got your email address. Can you guys? Yeah, we'll worry about it. All right. Yeah, thank you, Jack. We got your address and we'll get back to you um, fairly quickly when we get back to the office. Uh, Whitney, what a great question. Um, Thank you. That is something I probably should have automatically covered. The answer is no. The black book is out of date. The current law, and we don't, we don't print that black book anymore. Uh, we haven't printed the law uh, probably in eight or ten years, maybe a little longer. Um, and that's because the law is online. You can go to the Real Estate Commission's website and you can pull the code of laws down. In fact, um, I would ask all of you to do that to review the law. It's, it's, it's a short read, but it's a good practice. And uh, the most current, up to date code of laws is on the website. The Black Book uh, is no longer, it is outdated. Any other questions? Let me review the list one more time and see if there's other things we want to cover here. Um, Byron, anything you can think of that we might need to talk about? You can tell me about the, uh, the conference, the realtor conference. Uh, yeah, I, uh, well, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, good information as well. Um, under the new direction of, of Catherine Templeton, uh, administrators are, are now the face of the commission as they used to be in years past. Um, and I'm happy to say that probably for the first time in a host of years, um, I'll be able to travel up to Greenville and spend a couple of days with all of you at your annual convention, which is in Greenville. Um, and so I'll be there Thursday and Friday, or most of Friday with you, and look forward to seeing those of you who are in attendance there. And as I understand, um, if, if you need to ask questions, I'll be readily available to, to grip and grin and talk to you and uh, answer questions that you may have. I'm looking forward to that opportunity. So, yeah, make sure that you attend that conference and um, hopefully we'll see you there. We've got about 10 minutes left. I don't know that I've got 10 minutes uh, of time here to talk about anything specific. 
I've covered most of my topics. Um, I will tell you uh, that in preparation for today's webinar, um, the association sent me a host of questions that a lot of you have. Uh, it, it was somewhat overwhelming, but it was was uh, was very informative. And um, I've asked Byron and, and Nick and, and Jessica um, if they would allow me some time to, to, to look at those questions in depth, come up with some answers, and then come back and do another webinar based on the questions that you all have. This information is the things that I thought you might need or that we as a staff thought you might need. So if you've got questions, send them to the association. They'll forward them to us, and, uh, and we'll work on doing another webinar to answer those questions for you. And um, I hope this is going to be the first of many ways to get information out to you. It, it, it seems foolish not to utilize this tool when, when we're trying to all work, hopefully, on the same page together. So, um, you guys are asking some tough questions today. Um, I'm going to look that one up too, Jack, if you don't mind. Um, that's not the same individual, is it, that sent us their email address earlier? Oh, yeah, it was, yeah. All right, Jack, that same question will be, I'm going to look at the law, uh, talk to staff and attorneys, and we'll get an answer to you on that one as well. Um, Jack, you're being tough on me today, but I appreciate you asking those questions, man. Good stuff. So Jeff and Jack, all right. Okay, I think, I think I've think i pretty much covered everything I wanted to talk about. I'll be happy to elaborate on anything else we need to talk about um, coming, coming up. Uh, we review one more time. Mr. Tiller, if you're back on the ranch watching, have we covered everything? Is there anything else you can think we need to talk about? If so, feel free to ask a question. While we have an opportunity, I want to give a shout out to Jessica who helped get me prepared for this, who works here at the association. She's done a great job. And then our team sitting over here working cameras and questions, they're doing a great job. And to Elizabeth, who helped do the sound checks earlier, you did a good job with that. Thank you. Uh, I hope we, you could hear us all, all morning long or all afternoon long. Um, Byron, anything else? Thanks for coming over, Jay. And uh, thanks to, again to Sharon and Mike, that uh, our technical crew. And uh, we're looking forward to the conference and future webinars. And thanks for coming in. Okay, everybody. It's